Welcome back to Hoosier Sports Night. The men's swimming and diving team finally put a tally on the win side for the Hoosiers against Northwestern this weekend. IU began their season scoring 167 points and beating the Wildcats by 36. Titus Knight led the team winning three individual events, and the Hoosiers also won the 200 free relay. The women's team also swam away victorious against the Wildcats with a 156-144 win. Senior Kate Fisenko won three individual events while setting two pool records. Over the weekend, the men's tennis team hosted the Wilson ITA Ohio Valley Regional Championship. Freshman Josh McTaggart was the lone Hoosier to advance to the quarterfinals of singles play. However, he suffered the first loss of his collegiate career against Vanderbilt's Ryan Lippman. The women's tennis team also competed in the ITA Regional Championships over the weekend in Cincinnati, Ohio. The Hoosiers advanced three players to the round of 16 before being eliminated from the tournament. Little set spike and score action for you as the Hoosier volleyball team traveled east across the border to Columbus, Ohio to face on the Buckeyes. Indiana kept it close against Ohio State but lost in four sets. The loss was not because of a lack of offense as freshman Jordan Haverly collected 15 kills. Indiana fell to 3-7 and seven in the Big Ten after their third straight loss. Now we move to the rundown with Ben Heisler. Wait. What? Oh wait, you're still sitting here. Yeah. <laughs> In his first rundown ever, Lucas Mayer takes a look at this week's most exciting Big Ten game. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Hoosiers of all ages, welcome into the rundown. A full slate of college football action from this weekend. Unfortunately, the Big Ten wasn't the most exciting. We had Ohio State and Penn State bolster their resume with big wins over Minnesota and Michigan respectively, while Purdue took care of Illinois. Of course, we all know what happened to the Hoosiers at Northwestern. The game everyone was looking at was Iowa against Michigan State. Iowa, the lone Big Ten team in the top ten rankings, and Michigan State looking to be the spoiler. How's Iowa gotten here? Well, that would be defense. This is a tackling turnover machine that is relentless and strikes fear into the hearts of coordinators across the country. Let's get into this one that turned out to be a classic. A huge game between the number six ranked Iowa Hawkeyes and Michigan State. Many looked at this as a trap game for Iowa. Michigan State driving with 6.40 left in the first when Kirk Cousins hits Mark Dell with, for a 23-yard reception. State's Brett Swanson would get a field goal and that would give them the lead. Shortly into the second quarter, Iowa is in the red zone, but here comes some defense. MSU takes down Ricky Stanzi for a sack. After an Iowa field goal to tie the game, State has the ball, but now it's time for Iowa's defense to show off, and there's Adrian Claiborne with a big sack to shut down the Spartan drive. Going into the third quarter, defenses rule with a field goal apiece. State and Iowa territory now, and here's Edwin Baker to the outside. That's the 30. That's the 20. Coming back inside to the 10, and he's not going to stop. He's going to keep turning those feet. He would finish with 68 yards rushing. Third and goal for MSU, and here comes that flaunted Iowa defense with the stop. A huge goal line stand for Iowa, and that's why they're a top 10 team. The Spartans take the lead on a field goal. Into the early minutes of the fourth quarter, Adam Robinson gets the ball, and now he's not going to stop. He keeps going, refusing to go down. He would finish with 109 yards in the game. Iowa on the goal line, and now it's MSU's turn to show some defense. There's a stop. Both defenses stopping the offense three times from the one yard line. Iowa hits a field goal and the game's tied at six. After MSU stalls, Iowa has the ball in Spartan territory. Stanzi, the shotgun, deep pass caught by Daryl Johnson Koulianos. A great catch for 32 yards. The Hawkeyes stall again and here's a field goal barely made by Daniel Murray. Iowa takes the lead 9-6. The way the defenses are playing, most people think this one's done, but Michigan State, they don't agree. A third and 18 and what? A hook and ladder. Blair White takes the ball down 27 yards. MSU will not go down without a fight. Cousins in the shotgun now. Ball at the Iowa 31. He's feeling the pressure, but the pocket is going to hold up. He's going to look to the end zone. And who's he going to find? Blair White again. Blair White with 95 yards in that touchdown catch. And they are starting to celebrate in East Lansing. Iowa hoping for a miracle comeback. 34 seconds left in the fourth. Hawkeyes at the MSU 31. Stanley zips it to Johnson Culianos for a 16-yard gain. And now it's fourth and goal. Two seconds left. This is the game. Perfect season on the line for the Hawkeyes. Stanley looks. That's a quick slant to Marvin McNutt, and Iowa wins. Iowa keeps its perfect season, and that will help propel them to the number four ranking in the country. A great game in Iowa City, and one that Hawkeye fans will be watching for a long time to come. Who does Iowa put their perfect season on the line against? It's your Indiana Hoosiers. For more on that game, we go back to the desk. 
All right, thank you, Lucas. Alongside Hoosier Sports Night IU football analyst Brandon walker Roby here in studio to do a little bit more breakdown of Indiana football. All right, Brandon. So it's 28-17 at the half. It should have been maybe 28-3, to 28-10. And going into the half, the Hoosiers were on top of the world. What took their momentum away? Really, when Northwestern put 17 points up in the second quarter, that I think that really hurt the Hoosiers' momentum and gave Northwestern the momentum they needed to come out in the second half to win. And I think it really showed when Northwestern put up 12 unanswered points in the second half. I think they went into the locker room like, hey, let's come out in the second half, do the same thing we just did in the second quarter, and let's win this game. Now, obviously, they had that confidence going into the half, but obviously there had to be some sort of a turning point. What was that turning point for Northwestern? When Northwestern had big plays in the fourth quarter, they gave up two big plays in the fourth quarter, and I think that really helped Northwestern out, really. Um, they came out, had two big touchdowns, and then it was a situation where the Hoosiers were in a fourth and three situation, and they didn't convert. And then Northwestern was in that same situation, fourth and three, and they converted. And that really helped Northwestern out. And you saw the momentum change from one sideline to another. And I think that really gave Northwestern the momentum they needed to finish the game. Now, obviously, it's a very tough loss. Hoosiers were looking at a potential five and three instead of a four and four on the season. One win away from a bowl. They could have been, but now obviously four more games to go. How can a team bounce back from what a lot of people are considering a very just demoralizing a loss like this on the road? Well, really, Ben, I mean, it was a crazy game. Everybody who's played football has been in those type of crazy games. But when you look at it, Northwestern isn't a bad team. I think the Hoosiers came into the game a five-point underdog. But really, they played well. The offense didn't have any turnovers, any penalties, and the defense forced three turnovers. So really, the Hoosiers gave a great effort. And to be up 28-3 on this Northwest team, you have to have put up a great effort in order to do that. So I think Coach Lynch just really needs to come to the team like, hey, we did what we had to do. We didn't get the outcome we wanted, but hey, that happens. But hey, we're the goal of playing 13, which is what we established in the beginning of the season, is still not out of reach. We're four and four. We're, we're not, you know, two and six. Right. We're not five and three. We're four and four. You know, we can, we can do this. We just need to win two games out of these last four, and we'll be okay. All right, so now the Hoosiers are going to go to Iowa City, take on the 8-0, and number four-ranked Iowa Hawkeyes on the road. On paper, obviously, a lot of people are saying this is going to be a wash game, but historically, the Hoosiers have played Iowa well. Two wins in the last three years against a pretty steady program, going 2-1 and one against them. Uh, go ahead and give us the game plan. What are your keys to the game for maybe the Hoosiers to go ahead and, and pull off this upset? I mean, the key to the game is going into this game and being excited about being able to play at Iowa. I mean, what else did you come to a Big Ten school for but to play in a big-time game like this? It's on ESPN. Millions of fans are watching. They're number four in the nation. Why wouldn't you be excited going into this game? You have a lot of people on this team who, were, who was on the team in 2007 and 2006 when we actually beat Iowa. So I feel that they should have a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge about Iowa. Hey, we can beat them now. We beat them before. Who's to say we can't do this now? And really, Iowa is a great team. They have a great defense. They have players that fit their scheme. They're going to run to the ball. They're going to force a lot of interceptions. The Hoosiers have to play like they did against Northwestern and not force or force force more turnovers than they give. You see what I'm saying? You can't have the interceptions. You can't have the fumbles that the Hoosiers are used to having. Play like they played at Northwestern. I think they'll be okay. All right. This is October 31st. It's a Halloween game. We've seen spookier things happen. <laughs> Brandon walker Roby, thanks so much for your time. No problem. Thanks All right. for having me. Absolutely. That's going to do it for this edition of Hoosier Sports Night. For Brandon walker Roby, my partner Rachel Benson, this is Ben Heisler. We'll see you next week on Hoosier Sports Night.